right, everyone, welcome back to the very first episode of Offset Conversation. In this space, I'm just looking to have an open, safe, positive, respectful space to have different conversations. Now, some of the topics may or may not uh, pretend to cars, hence offset, like the wheel, get it, offset. So in this space, I just want to be able to create uh, a space where we can have different conversations regarding life in general. Just to give you guys an idea, some of the topics that uh, I will be answering and discussing will be things like minimalism. As you can tell, this is my living room. Um, My wife and I have definitely got into minimalism. Um, Budgeting, I guess I love budgeting if that's a question that may come up. Um, As of now, from the Q&A comments that I put in, most of them have been car related, as it's to be expected. But if you guys enjoy this and if there's a topic that you guys kind of want to you know, bounce ideas in a very respectful manner, let me know. Um, at the same time, the way I'm going to be format- formatting these episodes, and I say episodes, it's just kind of more like answering a question and going on. I definitely do want to have guests in, speaker, you know, speakerphone uh, guests. And at the same time, I also would like to have live uh, sessions. We'll see how that goes, and um, definitely would love to meet up with some of you guys and just have conversations about life at a coffee shop or wherever the the place may be appropriate and discuss cars and life and things in general. So this space is just for me to once again push myself out of my comfort zone. Not my comfort zone of being in front of a camera. A lot of people may ask, well, how come you're not in camera when you do the interviews? I'm not in camera just because I want that to be an experience about the driver and the builder. You know, five years from now, when the video's still there, they're able to see it. My face is not there. It's them and the car that they built. So that's the reason why I don't really show myself on the camera. This one's going to be all me. So if I'm not the most very, you know, good looking kind of person, I do apologize. The going out of my comfort zone is speaking, um, you know, killing that, the um, and things like that. And hopefully getting better at that and just being able to have discussions with you guys. That's the me getting out of the comfort zone. At the same time, just to announce some stuff that's been going on, uh, car and non-car related in my life, and you know, just kind of continue building that relationship. So first and foremost, thank you guys so much for the support that you guys have given to the channel. If it wasn't for you guys, there's absolutely no way, no, no how um, I would be putting myself in this situation because then nobody would watch. Thanks to you guys, we've been able to surpass 10,000 subscribers, and that's mind blowing that there's even 50 people out there mm-hmm. that are willing to watch the things that I put in. And that's thanks to the builders who have amazing builds and that have taken the time to really show their babies. So I do thank you guys for that. And I do thank you, whoever's commenting and positive, positive you know, comments and liking and sharing to those um, that would benefit from it. Thank you. In addition to that, another thing that I'm putting myself out of my comfort zone is um, we did we did stickers a while back now we're doing shirts and when i said we're doing shirts i only mean like 35 shirts don't think that i'm going to be like massing producing and launch date and things like that the very first time i'm going to be doing shirts so it's just very simple i don't want a banana in the front and then the logo in the back i don't want a banana only like 35 shirts thank you to mike the passionate breed he's the one who created the logos and thank you to CT2 underscore designs. He's the one who helped me out with the shirts. So the very first question in Offset Conversation will be the story of Jackie. How did I became the owner, the proud owner of a 95 Honda Accord? So I all started back in 2009, uh, working at a fast food, not making that much money. I, I was going to community college at the time, taking the bus, taking me about an hour and a half to get to school. While in car, it takes 10 minutes. And I've always been that type of person who you work hard, you pay yourself, or at least the most you can. Definitely not a hand down for my single mother. And so when I was going to school, I wasn't getting financial aid. I did not get student loans. I was paying out of my pocket, working at full time, plus other different gigs uh, at a fast food. I was able to save about $2,000 after a year and a half of saving. My brother Danny let me borrow a thousand and my mom let me borrow a thousand. So that's four thousand dollars. 
which I ended up paying them back within a period of six months, eight months. I hate owing things and people and just in general. I'm looking for a car. I don't know if this ever happened to you, but we're looking, looking, looking. Nothing pops up. At the time, I really, really, really wanted a two-door two Civic 6th Gen. So 98 to 01, I believe that's what it is. I couldn't find it. Not even the SI model, because the SI were like going six, 7,000. And long story short, my stepdad and I, we end up going to Santa Ana. We end up in these little dealerships. We're walking through many dealerships. We finally get to one when there's mainly Hondas. And we get there, and there's nothing. We're walking, we, we go through a corner, and I see Jackie right there. And for the first time, I was like, mm. mind you, before that, I didn't really like Accords. My brother was actually the one who would introduce me to the fifth gen and say, dude, these cars are nice. They're nice. They have potential, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, eh, I don't know. So we ended up where these two Civics were, a four-door and a two-door. The two-door was automatic, and the four-door was manual. I did not want an automatic car. I don't know. So I was like, mm, definitely not a two-door Civic automatic. I get in the four-door sedan, four-door sedan, and I got scared. I sat three pedals, and I'm like, dude, I only have two feet. <laughs> and I don't know why my stepdad said, hey, by the way, um, now, I don't know why, but it just became that thing where like, I was like, well, I'm kind of not sure about this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to drive it when he clearly knows how to drive stick shit. He would have been able to help me. I do say my stepdad and I do say, do say single mother because even though, you know how it gets, they were living together, it was two completely different worlds. And so, but I do owe my stepdad um, a lot of everything, pretty much 90% of the things I know mechanically. Anyway, so he's the one who helped me look for a car. And then I was like, ah, I don't know, it's a four of all paying it off. So I tell the salesman, how about that, uh, that Accord over there? So he's like, which one? So we walked back. At the time, it had chrome rims. It had barely been like a nicely, freshly painted um, coat of paint. It wasn't really a nice one, but it looked, it looked just, it popped. It looked nice. And again, I don't know. Every damn car looks so much nicer at the dealership. So we end up uh, making a deal. I did overpay. Uh, we paid $4,000 for it. At the time, it had 170000 and I was just on top of the world. I absolutely love it. At the time, I also knew that there, there was a, a market car scene, you would say. I thought it was only for Civics. It's not until I started Googling a core JDM, a core lower, a core whatever. And then I came across this forum, hondasociety.com. So big shout out to all you OGs from Honda Society. It's a forum for all Accords, purely Accords. So they break it down into fourth, fifth, sixth, and, and so on, generations of Accords. For the very first time, I was introduced to amazing builds. Fifth gen, fourth gen, I was just like, well, this is my, this is my place. Going back to jumping out of your comfort zone, I created a build thread. Build. It was just a me, you know, I was a way of introducing myself and say, hey, I'm a fellow Accord owner, I love this, blah, blah, blah. And when you're in a, in a forum with such high quality builds, expect such high quality expectations, <laughs> expect expectations. And I'm gonna say about 60 to 70% of the comments, welcome, good luck, search, blah, 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 blah. The other ones were pretty negative. And it always stuck by me because at that point I realized like, hey, there's, there's multiple ways of sending a message. So big shout out to some of the people that I'm about to name, Ralph, Yakuna, uh, you know, Serge from Seattle, Jake, all these different OGs, uh, Hooligan Accord, just different OGs from the Honda game that definitely helped me. I would shoot them a message and they were quick to respond and, and let me know, hey, this is the part that you need or this is the way you should do X, Y, or Z. So throughout that, that was the very first time that I was able to, I guess, think, man, I can modify this car. My car can look like that, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, some of those OGs from Honda Society created Kelly Accord Me in Griffith Park, Los Angeles. And so for the first time, I was like, I want to go. And we were able to catch her the very first year throw, throughout all the years until, uh, I guess, it stopped in existence. Kind of bummed out about that. But 
man, for the very first time, I was able to see a court that were automatic, fixed up, and it gave me hope, like, man, I can fix this car. So since May 5th of 2010, I've owned Jackie. And to those who know me, it's nothing special. It's really special to me. It's, it's automatic, it's not fast. Um, my plan is only just to pretty much redo the motor. If the tranny goes out, like it already went, I already replaced the engine, I replaced the motor, uh, the tranny. Um, I don't know if I'll go five speed. I think maybe five speed H swap, if I can get it barred. I don't want to be dealing with, you know, the officers. I've gotten pulled over many times and it's always about weird stuff. Like, hey, the back light doesn't work. I want to check it. It's like it's working. So that's kind of weird. And I just don't want to be dealing with that. But big props to those who actually cruise every day on swap engines. Mad props. I So, hence why another reason on the interviews, I don't do too much driving footage. I do respect the owners and I wouldn't want to, I, I don't want to put them in a situation where I wouldn't want somebody to put me in. So that's the reason why I try not to have them drive too far and we don't spend too much doing pulls or, you know, just outside footage. But anyways, that was the very first story I wanted to share with you guys in this offset conversation um, episode, I guess. Lastly, I just want to be closing it in by saying congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. As you guys may know, I'm a huge Chiefs fan. Um, to see them win a Super Bowl was pretty surreal. After 18 years of watching them, yes, 18 years, I'm only 28, so I started watching them at 10. It was like one way for me to feel, not even quote, quote, American, but just to have something to talk about with my friends back in fifth and sixth grade, uh, to be able to say I have my own team. And to see them actually win something, we've gone through some rough seasons. And those who are really Chiefs fans, you guys will know, very rough, and I guess, Raider fans know about all that. Brown fans know about that. But anyways, it was pretty surreal. It was pretty cool. Um, kind of sad that Tom Bahali, Jamal Charles, Brandon Flowers, Eric Berry, Tony Gonzalez, um, some of those legends didn't get to win Dwayne Bowe. They didn't get to win a, a Super Bowl. But hey, you know, it is what it is. So pretty happy. If you're a Niners fan, just let you know, Niners are my second favorite team. In any other Super Bowl, if it would have been Niners against anybody else, I definitely would have gone for the Niners. But it just happened to be against my Chiefs, and there's no way I'm going against my Chiefs. I'm tired of seeing them lose. There's no way I'm going to root against them. But anyways, this is the very first episode. just want to say thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for the positive comments. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, regarding this episode, if you f- find something, hey, and you keep saying um too much or whatever the case, leave it in a positive way. We'll definitely take, uh, you know, that into consideration and trying to always get better um, but like i said just thank you guys for the support there's just absolutely no reason why i would even think that i was going to get to 10 plus thousand subscribers that's insane so it's thanks to you guys and i hope that we keep educating and by say we i mean the builders on the different type of cars and you know just very keep it very respectful and hopefully these officer conversations will continue to spark the interest in conversa- conversating in a very positive and respectful manner. Um, that said, thank you guys so much. And remember, we go for the, for the car, but we stay for the person. So thank you. Keep building. Be nice. And we'll see you in the next one.